Well, excited to be back to believe in Chargers with the great Lorenzo Neal. Of course, all decade, all pro. Uh, I'll just get one comment out of the way real quick here, uh, Low, because Lindsay, here. our executive producer, does such a great job of curating all these, and we appreciate all of your uh, all of your YouTube comments um, and all of your suggestions or questions, and we'll get to a handful of those uh, throughout the course of the show. But, and of course, I had it queued up, and now I went to expand the window, <laughs> no, and it disappeared. It like that. What a disaster, because I want to make sure that I get the person credit who actually wrote it, because it's very clever. Um, yeah. Here it is. From Fluid Confusion 1451, important to get that in there because they want themselves name-checked. Some players yeah. get their number retired if they do well. I always joke that Lorenzo Neal was so good at fullback, they retired the whole position when he left. <laughs> <laughs> that was classic. I, you yeah. know what? I'm glad you gave me that one. I needed that today. <laughs> hey, the Chargers have a fullback. Ben Mason, he's, he's a hybrid fullback tight yeah. end, but at least sure. – on the depth chart, the FB has made an appearance after disappearance since Derek Watt. So I guess technically Gabe Neighbors was a fullback for a little bit. So we've had uh, we've yeah. had a few here. As uh, as we remind you and we thank you for for listening and watching and everything. Always, if you don't mind, leave a comment uh, if you can, even if it's brief or if it's a question, something you want to engage. We love reading through those and trying to find some so we can. Let you know that we appreciate you. Uh, if you leave a rating, that helps us grow the pod and the uh, the YouTube and all of that as well. But um, with the great Lorenzo Neal uh, here at Believe Back after a week off, Lo, you uh, you went halfway across the world to uh, to get some action in, huh? Yeah, man, it was freaking one day in, one day out. I tell you, I was beat up, tired, heck of drain. That I don't want to ever do that flight again if it's not for at least a week or extended time. <laughs> Money, I felt like you know, just in and out, in and out. Yeah, I did a uh, one day in Boston once, and I can remember, <laughs> actually. I flew into DC. I took a red eye into DC for breakfast. I yeah. then took a train to Philly for lunch, and flew to Boston for dinner, and then. Ended up flying home, I think, the next morning. And it was one of the oh. worst things I'd ever done. And I can't even imagine <laughs> you you going where you, you went UAE. Is that where you went? Yeah, I went to Dubai. So it was like freaking went to Dubai on freaking for one day. And I forgot what I forgot the days. I forgot everything. Right. Because I left at four, four fifty on Monday. So there how well, I many hours? 16 or whatever hours ahead. So I, I land the next day at nine o'clock at night. Okay. I have a meeting the following day at at uh, freaking eight in the morning. I'm on a plane back to, to New York the next night at one o'clock in the morning. I land in New York at eight, nine o'clock in the morning on Thursday. And then so, it, 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 back, it, yeah. yeah, it, it was like, I'm losing Nightmare. a day, gaining a day, losing a day, gaining a day. So, you know what? I read the talk football. <laughs> yeah, well, while you were doing that, I was, uh, I, I had to weather the 405 freeway, okay? I had to uh -huh. deal with, you know, some bad traffic on the 405, making my way up to the bolt that they opened up for us on Thursday of last week. And it is exceptional. I cannot recommend to all the folks that are kind of, well, do I really want to just go train or do I want to sign up and take a tour of a facility? Yes, you do. You do. It's really, it lets you know how different things are what this organization where the arrow is pointed how much money the spanos family sunk into this thing it's 300 million plus if it's a cent it, it might be sniffing 400 million after wow. kind of what i was able to see you're talking about 150,000 square feet olympic lap pool in the back two lanes of that you got three tubs a sauna a steam room the most beautiful workout room outside of the university of oregon or the University of Texas. Uh, I mean, it wow. is it is incredible what they put together, indoor, outdoor. Spent a bunch of time with with Ben Herbert, strength or the uh, director of player performance, and the players can be excited. Got into the kitchen. They've got their own pizza oven with mosaic tiles and a Charger helmet. Wow. It's kind of cool. Talk to the chefs for a little while and what they're putting together nutrition wise. So very impressive what the bolts have going moving forward low and and for people wow. from, you can sign up for training camp it's limited it's only going to be 1500 people that were building the grandstands while i was there so compared to what we had the last few years at jack hammett where we'd get you know ten thousand people slammed into that place for a practice can't do it right now there's just they, they don't have the ability to, to put that many people in mostly because of parking 
So it's it's capped at 1500, but there's a bunch of open practices. Figure out which one you can go to and make sure you get out there. Is that, is that temporary as far as far as being able to see 1500? In the future, will it get bigger? Or do you think it's just, hey, this is what it is because of just not the room? Yeah, I think it's probably logistics low. They'll have to figure out exterior satellite parking lots and and shuttles and and how because I bet they could they could probably throw bleachers up. It's three football fields. I mean, you're talking about three football fields wide is what they okay. got there. And so you can run grandstands along that whole thing. Remember at, at Hammett, it was two that went lengthwise that were parallel. These are three that stack perpendicular, right? So you're going okay. zero to 100 like this, and you can put all of the grandstands along. So I think you could put a lot more in, but it's probably because of just how hectic it was. The, the facility's still not finished. They were still working on it while we were there. Uh, all the stuff that relates to the players was all taken care of. But um, I know there. Wow. I know that I was I was DMing with um, with Karen, who we see every year. She's a huge fan, and she's awesome. And and she said she got in. As soon as they opened it up, and she was already 600th, I think, or 220th, she said in line. Uh, her husband popped on 20 minutes later and was already over a thousand. So, wow. certainly a lot of fans are, are signing up. But if you can, try to get out there because you're going to want to put your eyes on this thing. And I'll just start there, Lo. You know what what a facility means to a player, why it's important, why you think the the Spanos family, why Dean and and everybody decided to sink couple hundred million bucks into this place and and how that helps a team win on Sundays no question people say uh oh, the facility doesn't mean anything that's not true it, the facility means so many things and not just for players but just for the mystique for the organization recruiting when you're going out trying to bring in a player and they come to a facility and see it's a state of the art they look at the weight room they look at the, the you know the cafeteria and say oh my goodness look at all the amenities that they have the pool that you're talking about. I don't know if they have basketball courts. I don't know if they have a treadmill, water treadmill that they can do in the yeah, training room. I don't know if they have all those different things. But when you have those things, players understand when you go into a place, you always going to look at that training room and look at the place that you're going to be spending a lot of time. Training room, weight room, and meeting rooms in the field. Those yeah. are always yeah. very, very, very important. And to have those things now state of the art, because that also helps with longevity for players and all those other things. So now when you go to a place that's state of the art, guess what? Guys want to stay there a little longer. They want to put in a couple more hours. They say, you know what? This is my home away from home. I have a place that's state of the art. I can go in, recoup my body, rehydrate my body, do other things to not just help me get ready to play a football game, but have my body in optimal position to play at a very high level. You know, how? When, when was your last year, Lo? 2010. Okay, and so we're 14 years removed from your last year. I don't know if this technology was around when, yeah. when you were finishing up, but I had never seen anything like it. But as you can tell by my build, I may not spend a lot of time in a weight room. The uh, There were a number of these machines lined up right outside of Ben Herbert's office. And they kind of had this little holder for an iPad and they had these different pads and mats, and it looked like you would strap things onto your body. And, and I had never seen them before. So I asked him, what, what is that? And that was what he had talked about, the uh, performance indicators. Those were the machines that measured the performance indicators of what he's talking about. Where do we need to focus? Where is your strength? Where are your weaknesses? And, you know, they grade them on an A through F scale. And the one thing he brought up, he's like, this is probably the best way to illustrate it. And I'm wondering if, if you ever went through this, but he said, Maybe this player's here. Maybe this player's not. I'll just put it this way. Hips, right? Hip strength, leg strength. Abduction, adduction. He goes, I may have a player who is an A in what that would be abduction, right? Pushing out. Yeah. But they're an F when they're trying to push their hips together. A, sure. F. And I look at him, I'm like, okay, why, why do we think that is? And he's like, well, because... He's putting the band around his leg and he's doing those lateral walks all the time. He's very diligent about that, but he's never, you know, I think about the, the, uh, the Suzanne Summers thigh master, you know, yeah. whatever the equivalent would be, <laughs> but he's like, guy's never done it. He's like, so what? Okay, well, here we go. Let's, let's dive in. And, and you hope that they don't look at you and say, well, what are you talking about? I made it this far. I'm on my second contract. I'm, certainly doing all what, what do I need to do this for he's like but thankfully everybody on this team is buying in he's like so now instead of a and f we're b and b 
and we focused on, did you ever go through that? Did you have, did you have machines like that? Or did you have sort of, you know, measurements like that, that would then focus your training? Yeah, you know, you had measurements like that, but you didn't have them that that elite. So that precise. where you're talking about that precise, I mean, you had the Bidex machine, you had different machines that you could test where you're at, but you didn't say, God, now this is going to tell you you're 70 and here you're 80. So no, you didn't have those. These This is technology that I wish you would have had because of the fact when you're able to do that, now you can see where you're really deficient in. So now these abductor and, you know, being a dorsiflex and push your foot down and all those different things that you're able to do to say, Hey, how do I how do I get my body in symmetry and say I'm going to be as close as I can in everything? You're never going to be a hundred and a hundred of both, but at least you can say, God, let me get where I'm deficient in and make I and, and start to make the proper gains to make sure your body becomes more balanced. So I think it's unbelievable to have those type of machines. And I had that, and then they had these uh, again. You know, I'm used to. I think about a weight room, and you know what you think of, right? You think of squat rack right. and a bench, right. and you know, here's some dumbbells over here, and here's a little hammer strength. And I got, you know, and there are so many things that were just foreign to me. Uh, right. They had these drums that he said you would put out. They were, you know, high vibration, a very specific frequency drum that you would put on a, a portion of your body. That would then, you know, essentially be a massage. It's like a massage, and it's it's a sure. healing mechanism. And they had ten of those along the walls, and and the, the tire my machine. Favorite, they have a, the, a, they have a tire rack machine. A, a tire rack machine, where the, the one where it's you go in, it's friggin' freezing. You have to put it's chiro machine where it's going oh, right. in and it's like. Do they have one of those where well, you, they have? You're... They have cold tubs. They got three tubs. Okay. So you got sauna, steam, and then you walk through a door, and there's three tubs. And so okay. I'm guessing you can keep those at whatever temp you want. You want this one at 39, this one at 50, and this one's at 105. What you know? So they they have all of that. There may it may have been. It's a massive space, but my favorite part of it, and it's when when I talked to Coach Herbert, it was his favorite part too. Is indoor outdoor. So you've got these Catalina doors that collapse ah. and now the weight room is open and you've got all of these. So you've got five, six squat racks outside. You've got weights outside. You've got all these things available. Your, your old friend, Nick Hardwick does a yeah. great job on Instagram of, of showing uh, he, he took a photo today. We're doing the day we're recording this. So he took the photo today and posted it on his Instagram feed of, you know, the sun coming up over the the fence, the three football fields and all of the outdoor equipment. And I was like, here we go. Little prison. Oh, yard I got to check that out. That's what I'm talking. Let's get a little prison yard workout going outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd oh, I got to check. But, and that's what coach Herbert said. He's like, I love having it outside. You know, guys are like, yeah, sweating a little bit, take the shirt off, you know, kind of get a little vibe going. No question. When you can be indoor and outdoor and have that kind of versatility to be able to say, man, today, you know, we're just open up the doors and boom, get that fresh air, that sunlight hits you and you're freaking, it does, it puts your mindset differently. Sometimes you're inside and it kind of gets claustrophobic or you just kind of, you just different setting. It just changes the mood, changes the, the, the ore. So I think it's unbelievable, man. This facility, man, you're, you're talking about, it. got me fired up. I can't wait to get down, yeah, you gotta get down, down south to come check it out. You got to get down low and, Look, I, I know I, I hate I hate mentioning it because I know the people that work there and they're great people and they bust their ass and it's not necessarily fair. And I know Joey Bosa got really upset about the food getting an F from the Chargers when they did those grades because, you know, you're in a temporary facility. You're in an office building. You were building this four hundred million dollar, one hundred and fifty thousand square foot palace up in you know, LA. So you're not going to sink a ton of money into a temporary facility that you're going to be leaving. So I, I hate, you know, pointing out that, yeah, you know, the food got an F and now it's Wolfgang Puck and there's this pizza oven and all these smoothie bars and a million coffee mm. machines. And it's you know, just a wall of fridges and freezers and whatever you need, they have at, at wow. your beck and call. So I would say if 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 you want to if if you were able to bet on it, it seems like we can bet on anything these days, which is why you should go to Bet Online, number nice. one source for all your sports betting needs this season: baseball, golf, soccer, all the top fights in UFC and MMA and boxing, every stat matchup, live odds and spreads while the games are being played. You can continue to bet through Bet Online. When the game is over, they got an online casino, blackjack, poker. 150 slots, uh, the website, get in on the action. That's how you do it. Use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. 50% free bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online. 
the game starts here. But if you're able to bet futures on who's going to have the biggest jump in grades, it's going to be the Chargers. I mean, it's it, it's probably I I didn't even want to say probably. It's the nicest facility in the NFL. So the question is, what do you think that football? I always tell people football is different. Football because of the violence and because of the potential of it being such a short career plane, you just go for whoever's going to pay you the most money. That's just football is, is there are very few other, I, I, from my perspective, low and from what I've seen, you may push back on that a little bit, but I'm sure the facility will help break some ties, but ultimately it's still going to come down to who's going to pay you the most money. Um, oh, yeah. You know, it's just, it's different that way. It is. And when you talk about, yeah, do a facility help, though? It does it help the mindset of a player? Yeah. But it, like you said, when you're talking about just far as contract, man, guys, look, I'm going to pass California because of the taxes. People are going to say, man, right. I'd rather go to Florida. I'd rather be in Tennessee. There's other places that say, God, a million dollars, I'm going to keep 20 percent more. Guys do make those type of financial sure. decisions. So no question that they that, that money comes down to it. it doesn't make dollars. It doesn't make sense. And at the same sense, though, but I'm talking about when you're saying, but does it help a team? It helps a team in the regards that you're saying, okay, I know when I go to a facility, I'm going to be taken care of. I know that I'm going to get the proper nutrition, the balance. I, you know, like I told you, I was with the Saints wearing trailers. I, you know, it, right. it was horrible. Fun. We didn't have 50 yards of field. And then, of course, they upgraded and built a new facility. You know, I was in Baltimore where they had a state-of-the-art facility, the flat pool and all the different things, a huge weight room, state-of-the-art, you know, technology. You know, and so you've been at certain places and you see, you know, San Diego, we didn't have necessarily on Arrow Drive, wasn't necessarily the best facility. No, it's not. But you still performed at a high level. We still had a good team. So when you don't have the best facility, sometimes you got to have the best players. Sometimes you got to have the best coaches. So it goes hand in hand. But to have that nice facility, it does make guys feel at home. It makes yeah. guys feel that, hey, I'm comfortable. I can spend more time here because I know that I can get the proper rest. I feel that I can get the proper you know, training. You got a great strength coach. So guys are going to be more apt to say, I can spend more time there. And coaches want guys spending more time there if they're spending t- more time there to get better and work on their craft. Right. It, it's it's not a negative. Yeah, that's for sure. Right. That's the best way to put it. Like, hey, it's, it's not a – how much of a positive is it? I would assume, cons- you know – considerable like you said you still have to have the players still have to have the team yeah. still have, to have the coaches yeah. still got to win games still got to execute perhaps this helps because you're spending more time there you're watching more film you're spending more time with your coaches you're in the workout room a little bit more and getting attention from top flight you know player development you know directors like ben herbert and that's where it, it comes in. you're developing more chemistry with your yeah. with your team that's not excuses Yes. It, it, your, your excuse is what it does, though, money is, is it shrinks the excuses because you can't say, right. hey, God, I don't have the proper. I, I got to go get a I have to go get a nutritionist because I need the right food. Well, you have a guy like Ben and a lot of guys. I, I tell you myself personally, I hired a trainer. You remember Todd Durkin down yeah. in San Diego. A lot of guys would, you know, meet certain you know, masseuses and certain things that you would have to get outside of the facility to pay for for your body. And guys still probably will do that. But now if you have the state of the art and have those things there, so it is going to help guys be healthier. It's going to help guys. So I think that plays a huge factor because you cut down on excuses because you can't say, oh, I, I, this trainer doesn't know what he's talking about, or my strength coach is not as good. You have certain guys that they don't understand what the strength coach. So you have to go out and get your own strength coach because some of the guys are old school and don't understand technology and don't understand these things. So when you have a guy that's forward thinking when, with the new technology, or you're talking about where I can get Pacific. I know what my left shoulder is stronger than my right. I know my left hamstring is stronger than my right hamstring. How am I going to, how am I going to perfect that? And that's what you have. So you're going to cut down on excuses and I think you're going to cut down big time that we know this team went through money and you've always talked about it is injuries. When you have this type of yeah, facility in this type of trainer, injuries are huge. Yeah, that's what he said. Make these guys harder to break. Okay, let's focus on because we're doing this. Rookies are here. R- rookies have arrived uh, next week. Training camp rolls uh, 23rd. That's and we are off. And running, but rookies are there right now. So I wanted to get a little bit of rookie conversation in because I've been fortunate enough to spend quite a bit of time with the rookies. They've been there pretty much the whole time. See them walking around. Uh, I've spent some time with you. I have two interviews now with Joe Alt on, on the radio show, a couple with Lad McConkey, um, Brandon, Brandon Rice. I'm going to see him on Friday. But 
here's just kind of go through who's there, who you should keep an eye on, because, you know, we all know Justin Herbert and Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa and Derwin James, but everybody knows so Joe Walt, number five pick, is going to be your starting right tackle. He's going to be a fixture there, we hope, for the next 15 years and, and help make it the best offensive line in the league. Lad McConkey, your second round pick, very well could end up leading this team in receiving yards. Would not surprise me. Would actually, you know, I, I was I assume it'll be Josh Palmer, but it will not surprise me if Lad McConkey ends up with the most receptions and receiving yards. Junior Colson, your third round pick. We expect him. We think he's got a shot to to earn the starting mic position uh, coming out of camp and had some injuries that he was dealing with. Look like it's probably going to be Perriman and Henley at the start, and Colson's going to have to knock him off. Uh, your other draft picks, we've talked about Justin Aboigby. We heard Coach Elston, defensive line coach, does the interior line, say probably more of a developmental player. Um, you know, but at Alabama, was very good against the run, showed some explosiveness and some pass rushing situations from the interior. But we had already been told that he's probably a developmental player. So Tarheeb still, we've talked about him low. Uh, Derwin James name checked him. This is a guy that's going to be competing to be a starter week one against the Raiders as your nickel. And he was great at Maryland. They moved him all over the field. Primarily, they, they've been moving him around the field, uh, you know, through the, the mini camps that we watched and the rookie camps that we watched. But they're probably set on the outsides with, with Asante and Christian Fulton, who they right. signed from Tennessee. And that battle is going to be in the nickel. And I think Tarheeb still has a legitimate chance to win that job coming out of camp. Yeah, and you're going to need him because you know the nickel position, what guys do. A lot of teams, you know, they stay with that that nickel receiver. Yeah. So your, your nickel player, he's going to have to be on the field. It's no longer that he's a, a specialty guy that plays, you know, 10, 15 plays a game. That nickel player, you, sometimes they start in nickel. So, you, you know, you play against Kansas City. You play against a lot of these teams that you're going to play at, that you're going to have to have your nickel and your dime guy ready to go. So you want to make sure – that they compete in that and compete at a high level. And you look at the team that you're going to be playing against money. We say no more. You don't have to even talk. It's the Raiders. You know what the Raiders did to the Chargers. They cost guys jobs, cost yeah. guys, coaches a job. So when you think about what you're getting ready to do, you're in a new facility. You're, you, you have a pretty much a new team. You brought in a bunch of new faces. You're going to compete. And Harbaugh, trust me, he's not going to let these guys forget what the Raiders did to them last year. No doubt. And Raiders are going to be interesting. They, they invested a 13th pick in Brock Bowers. They invested essentially a first round or Michael Mayer, I think was maybe second, third pick of the second round. So are they going to be running a, a lot of 12 and is, you know, are they going to be a two tight end team? And that's going to be interesting when you're talking about free linebackers versus nickel versus dime that you're going to see with a lot of these teams out there, because you just don't see a lot of fullbacks. You don't see a lot of two yeah. tight end sets, but you might see it in week one. And, there's a little wrinkle for you straight out the gate. Isn't it crazy? I mean, of course, we're not going to get into week one, really. But I'm excited because you have two coaches that are built the same. Not, not Harbaugh's, of course, has more edge and more knowledge, and he's a better coach. We yeah. understand that. But I'm just talking about two guys, their physicality, what they want to do, how they, the, the mindset right. is going to be interesting because this is about whose team is going to impose their will. Would you not agree? 100%. I'm with you. And it's why it's interesting that they let Josh Jacobs go, right? Who, who's been one of the best backs in the league for the last five years. They, they let him walk. We'll see. Zamir White looks like he's going to be the guy, but the, the two tight ends, because look, you saw Buffalo do it as well. They drafted yeah. Dalton Kincaid. They already had Dalton Knox. They let Stefan Diggs go. They started running the ball really well last year. So you're starting to see the rest of the league go, okay, well, it's a speed league. It's a finesse league. We get physical. We may have an edge because there's not enough. There's not enough sand in the ass to to contend with a more <laughs> physical team. So um, keep going, Cam Hart. We know also probably developmental certainly has the measurables, and and that's you know in terms of an outside corner that would be ideal because you want a guy that big. You need your corners to tackle. That's something that's been an issue with this team over the past few years, where you get it back to the edge and it's just over. It gets ugly. So. Um, Cam Hart, someone who I'm guessing is probably going to be a little bit more of that. Let's look down the road and and develop him as best we can in case you need him <laughs> because death tends to show up. Kamani Vidal is is going to be in the mix as someone who's going to get carries. They want to run the ball, and you've got two guys coming off injuries. 
and Gus Edwards and, and J.K. Dobbins. So that third back position is going to be a hell of a competition between he and Isaiah Spiller, who right. ends up as the the number three. And I think the two wide receivers, Cornelius Johnson, Brendan Rice, just because of what they were able to do in the offseason and, and bring in D.J. Shark. They're going to – I do think there's – and the way they want to play, the way we think the Chargers want to play, I think that could be a heck of a battle as to whether or not one of those guys is going to end up making the roster – out of camp or if, if they're both going to be practice squad guys and continue to develop them and, and see if they can make their way up. But with, with shark, I mean, will you just start with Josh Palmer, Quentin Johnson, Darius Davis, second round pick, Lad McConkey. I mean, you got four right there and that, you know, now you want to contribute. To, you want those yeah, four to so, contribute. And, and my, my question with you is, do you see this team carrying four backs on game day? Or are you saying, Hey, is one somebody going to be on a practice squad? How, how do you know? Cause you know, the running back position, you know Harbaugh's going to run the ball, and you know you got right. two guys that's been injured. So it, does it behoove them to keep these guys because you don't know about the injury yeah. or is some one of these guys on the practice squad? I think squad they'll make the practice squad. I think they'll clear waivers I, unless they <laughs> light up the preseason and then they'll earn their way out of the roster. But I'm guessing it's a five-receiver squad. I'd be very surprised if they carried a sixth receiver. So, you know, and, and really because Darius Davis is your returner, you're really kind of carrying four, right? It's Shark, Quentin Johnston, Josh Palmer, Lad McConkey and, and Darius Davis, who can do some great things with the creative coordinator because of his legitimate four, three speed. Right. So I, to me, that makes more sense. The, the interesting one, it's going to be the tight end position. There's, there's an undrafted free agent out of South Dakota state. I think South, is it South Dakota or South Dakota state? I don't want to get those wrong because I know, um, yeah, he's South Dakota state, Zach Hines, who, you know, how they want to play, you know what they want that they want their tight ends to be full service. Will Disley is, is, is exactly that. It's why they gave him a bunch of money in the offseason. Hayden Hurst is, is an okay blocker. He's a hell of a receiver, but Zach Hines, is, he's a big dude, and he really showed out in, in the voluntaries and in the mandatory minis. Um, so that's one to keep an eye on is that, that potential undrafted free agent that could make the team. They want to carry extra tight end. You know, Is, is Ben Mason going to be a fullback? Is he going to be a, a tight end hybrid? Is he going to make the team? He's dealt with some serious injuries throughout his entire career. And then the tight ends that were already here. How does this coaching staff view, you know, Donald Parham and Stone Smart? They've, you know, they've, they've been contributors in the past. We'll see whether or not they fit the mold of, of what Harbaugh and Coach Harbaugh and, and Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, view and, and Coach Bischoff, the tight ends coach, view is, is what they want from their tight end room and whether or not Hines jumps ahead of of one of those guys you know they're both undrafted guys they they came from the you know stone smarts a converted quarterback and and donald parham is an xfl guy that, that came right. over so you're not talking about someone that a first round pick was invested in so that's one that i would i would keep an eye on from the the rookies he he was someone that certainly flashed out there and, and when you look at that position, you're talking about tight end. You, you, okay, of course we know they got to catch the ball, but I think it's going to be predicated on. Okay, we know who's going to be the catcher, but who is going to be the best blocker? When you think right. about what you're talking about in 12 personnel, two tight ends, if Zach Hines is going to be a better blocker and he's going to concentrate, say, man, I I know, I knew myself personally. Think, take me for instance. If you if I had to go and say I'm going to make a team by my catching ability and how I'm running the ball in my latter part of my career. I don't make a team. Right. So what made Lorenzo Neal special was my ability to block and destroy guys. So when you're looking at Zach, here's a guy that's saying, okay, Heinz is saying, what is going to be my, yeah, off season, work on your catching, work on making sure you're route running, do all those things, do that, get better. But what is going to be your bread and butter? You right. know who your coach is and you know what they want to do. So my advice to Zach is saying, okay, when I get on these pads, I'm going to show them that I'm going to create a new line of scrimmage and I'm going to move people because I know how important and how imperative it is to have a great running game for this Chargers offense. Yeah, and it's it's where did you land? He's an undrafted free agent that landed with the Chargers. You know what they want to do. You know, they, they want you to block. And yep. the, the catching is going to be a bonus. And they, have, they, they signed Hayden Hurst. He's a guy that's piled up six touchdowns in a season. He's a guy that's piled up 700 yards in a season. They got a guy that can catch the ball and has proven that he can catch the ball. Did it in Cincinnati, did it in Atlanta, did it in Baltimore. They've got a guy who can block like a mother scratcher, one of the best in the entire league in Will Disley, and he can also catch the ball. He's your full service. He is your starting tight end. So where's your where's your big bulldozer to go out there if you want to 
you know, show a little little strength with two tight ends on the end of one side of that line and and you still have the threat to catch the ball, you got some girth and and Hines looks like the guy that could that could provide that. The other there, there's there you know, there are so many undrafted. I think we got 31 guys that showed up yesterday. So you got a lot of rookies that are that are in there. They're fighting to make this team. The, the other one that I think is worth and it's just pure speculation, but Carson Barnhart, we've talked about him. He is, you know, flexible up and down the line, can play guard, can play tackle, played all four years for Coach Harbaugh, won a national championship with him last year. So that's the one I would just keep an eye on because, of sure. course, this team is not tied to Foster Sorrell, an undrafted free agent who was at one point, I believe he was the number one recruit in the nation uh, as an offensive lineman when he went to Stanford. So he's someone that's got the pedigree but just hadn't quite worked out for him. They don't, they're not tied to Jamari Sawyer. They didn't draft him. He was a great you know, bright spot in place of Rashawn Slater when he got hurt two years ago at left tackle, struggled yep. a little bit at right guard. Yep. So that's one that I would would also keep an eye on. I think those are probably the two most likely that, that might raise their hands as undrafted free agents. Sure. And when you when you talk about the, uh, the, the drafted and the undrafted free agents, when you talk about a, a position, the running back position, you know you have two backs that are coming off injuries. How do you see that? Do you see a rookie? Do you yeah. think that it's, is it going to keep four? You're, gonna, you're talking about a fullback that can go play tight end and full H. Is it that room four? Is it going to be one guy, three backs? How do you see it? Because you know every position in every you know uh, roster spot is going to be very, very tight this year because of what they're trying to do. It's you've got and you've got two guys that are banged up as your number one and your number two. You know, I think look best case scenario is jk dobbins is healthy and he looks like the second round pick out of ohio state that he was when he burst onto the scene and was one of the best backs in the league his first year for baltimore that's best case is he is healthy edwards is healthy they split the load edwards is one jk is one a and kamani vidal is your spell back that that would be my guess of how they want this to work out it's, it's wow. position of attrition running backs get hurt they take a exactly beating. So I will not be surprised if I would be surprised if they didn't carry four, put it that way. And that fourth back is going to be a battle, right? It's going to be Isaiah Spiller, Elijah Dotson, somebody that they bring in as an undrafted free agent. They have a couple of them that, that they brought in as undrafted free agents. I'm trying to remember the name of the one that I'm scrolling through my list right now, trying to find him. Well, why are you Jaylen, looking at that? I think because that running back was. What are you thinking? Is because that running back is is tough because you can't afford to have two guys that are injured, and to say going right. to a season with that question mark. So it's it's interesting because what it does though now it puts more of the onus. What are you going to do at that tight end position? Like I know we're going through the D line receivers, all these different things. If you don't have a back and you know what Harbaugh wants to do in this offense, so that's why I'm that's why I'm kind of you know on this running back situation because. Yeah. It's a, it's a question mark. It, it, you have to say, hey, I got to look at the obvious. I have two guys that are injury prone, two guys that that's your one and two. What are we going to get out of these? What can we expect? Yeah, I think I think they've proven that you can find backs from your practice squad that can you can plug and play. They've shown that across the league, right? And Austin Eckler with the Chargers is as good of an example as as any. You know, the last guy, the 53rd man to make the team, and he ends up being one of the best backs in the league. Thankfully, it's a position like that where a Gus Edwards undrafted can be, you know, a guy that piles right. up double-digit touchdowns in multiple seasons. So that's probably the good. And I think it's so hard for us to evaluate the two guys that were here that are still here in Isaiah Spiller and Elijah Dotson. The run blocking was so terrible last year that it's just hard to get a read on the carries that Elijah was given. He certainly looks like, you know, he's got the, he's body beautiful for that position. And we know Isaiah Spiller could do it when he had a great offensive line at Texas A&M and he's a big dude. So we've talked about it quite a bit. And I, I just assume they're going to carry four. That that would be my guess. I think if you try to sneak Isaiah Spiller through on the practice squad, he's going to get claimed. So that's why I think he ends up making it. Just in, unless he doesn't show anything, right. if he's not if he's if he's not showing anything, and this coaching staff again, they're not the ones that drafted him in the fourth round. Then they'll just move on. They'll try to sneak him through to the practice squad, but he'll get claimed. He's too. 
he's too big and he, he was right. just too talented coming out of AM for someone not to try to take a flyer on him and, and say, well, what, what the heck did you expect to see from the last two years? The guy, A, never got any opportunities, and B, when he did, was behind an offensive line that, that couldn't run block for Austin right. Eckler, let alone – uh, you know, a 20 year old kid that was the youngest player drafted the year that, that he was drafted. Uh, yeah. All right. Some questions. Let's get to that. Let's get to a handful of these as we wrap it up here. Uh, low. All right. Chargers done paying, well, paying the relocation fee. If so, did that have anything to do with how they're spending money now? Tom, I'll, I'll just answer that by saying, look, they're, they're going to continue to pay for moving to LA for the amount of money they had to take out to build this facility, but clearly they're making a lot more money now than they ever have. They, they are the Spanos family and, and you saw the Packers report because they have to make it public every year. And the NFL is a national league, unlike the regional differences that you can have when you're the Lakers or the Dodgers here and have that sort of, you know, local television money Trump, what everyone else has available to them and, and you can use that to your advantage. The NFL is different. It's basically one big pie that is split up 32 ways. And what you saw from the Packers, $450 million of, of income last year wow. and for 225 million of salaries and, and a net profit of like 60 million bucks. That's probably what it is for every club. And it's a big day. yeah. So I think just kind of to answer your question, is it is it tough for them to spend money? I think they've shown the way that they've approached contract extensions and free agency and with Jim Harbaugh making 16 million bucks a year and his staff probably making another at least 10 million bucks. It's a different day, Lo. It's a, it's a different day for the Chargers, right? <laughs> no question. No question. I think they got a couple quarters in it in none of the rug somewhere. Yeah. So um let's see would low please share the old fumbaruski play he ran in san diego <laughs> this is the, the sweet spot of the field too there's a fumbled snap no they give it to neil he picks it up he runs left side barrels his way over the goal line touchdown lorenzo neil's first of the year hey money where were you at do you think i was getting an end zone on that one when you when you watch that play develop were you... <laughs> if i'm being honest no I know, I know. Hey, money. I had to I'm run. Being honest, no, I did not think you were. <laughs> money. I had to drop the big boom. You seen the head? I, I had to run over like four people to get in there. Yeah. I was like, I gotta get in here. This is gonna be my last opportunity to score a I, touchdown. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, it's interesting. We practiced at the fumble risk. I remember, you know. OC at the time, Cam Cameron was like, hey, look, look, we're going to get you this Bumble Bumble Rooski, Bumble Rooski. I was like, okay, okay, we're going to try it. And Phillip Rivers, you know, opposed to go up there and just, they hide, slide the ball underneath and right. I just grab it and you wait for your pause for like 1,000, 1,000, and you got to take off and you're like, yeah. oh my God, I'm, I feel like I'm waiting too long or should right. I take off? And I'm like, I took off and I saw the corner and I'm like, ah, oh, I see a bunch of guys over here. This is going to be tough. And that's when I just dropped the big dome down, guys, and I got in there. Exactly right. That's right. It's I'm stronger than you. You know where I'm going. Try to stop me. And, uh, exactly. and it worked out. Uh, let's see. Darius Davis, return are going to be good for the new kickoff dynamics. That's why I wanted the Bolts to draft Isaiah Garendo, six foot, ran a four three three. I think that power back type may very well do better than the guys who had space to set up his speed. You know, I'll be honest, hokey duck. I don't know. We don't know. What I do know is speed plays. And at the returner position, speed is still going to play. You're, you can be big and pop, and, and I get it. That guy's six foot two thirty and ran a four three. You know the Cordero Pattersons those, and, and that's why Cordero ended up getting another contract for twelve million bucks because of how valuable he's going to be. But I don't worry about when you have a speed guy. You're not talking about breaking tackles. You're talking about just getting that ball and beating it to you know beating your man or whichever is the last man available to that corner and turn it on the Jets. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the returner. It's more the construction of the core four of the special, you know, the guys that are playing on all the special teams, kick, kick, return, punt, punt, return, because I think they're the ones that are going to have to get bigger. You know, your kick return guys are going to, instead of corners, you get all those defensive backs low. I think you're going to start seeing a lot more bulk, in, in that particular part of special teams as opposed to trying to, to get a different returner out there. 
I, I think you're absolutely right because guys can't go into the ball's caught. And once you see that happen, especially speed now is going to be – he's going to be able to run by guys because guys can yeah. be flat-footed. They're still engaged in blocks. You're going to be hard to clear blocks at that time. When you had that kickoff return to regularly, now guys run when the ball's in the air so you can beat your, bl- you can beat your man. And that's why speed was big on kickoff return and kickoff because the kickoff team had an opportunity at least to beat their man. A couple guys beat their man. Now you have the runner kind of in a pickle, but now you have to wait. So it's going to be tough because guys are going to have to be engaged because you're going to have to stay in your lanes. Now it's not necessarily, like you said, it's not going to be the speed like you just alluded to bigger bulkier guys because they're going to be engaged going to have to shed and be able to fall into tackles smaller guys are going to be able to just you can just engulf them so you're absolutely right it's going to have to be bigger guys more linebackers the safeties guys that can tackle that are better tacklers than these speedy receivers and corners because you just you just can't be get you can't you're going to be engaged and going to have to use a shoulder and lean in to make arm tackles and little guys just can't do it and and I would also say to to that question Darius Davis is exceptional. Like you're, you're not going to move on from someone. You can have four, three, three speed that, that, that Garendo has, but we know Darius has vision. Like we know he can see that's part of it, right? Vision, shiftiness, ability to change directions and, and find those angles. He's got it. I mean, he was voted by the players as the best punt returner in the league last year. So that's not necessarily something you want to move on from for a complete unknown. Like, I don't know exactly how this is going to work out. What I do know is Double D is one of the best in the league. So that's not something you necessarily are going to want to move on from until you absolutely know you have to. And then and then you'll figure it out. Uh, Lo, tell some Philip Rivers stories. I love the one about him rapping and singing loudly while walking up and down the hallways. <laughs> Philip was great, man. It, it, Philip, he... We had such a good time. I mean, the guy was just just funny. You know, he's from the South. It's just yeah. funny, that little twang he has. I remember me, him, and LT. So Phil was like, hey, Lo, man, I always watched, wanted to watch you play. And I looked up to you and LT. And me and LT were in the sauna with, with Phil. And we, you know, you know how guys always get in the sauna, wo- yeah. loosen up before the day. Everyone's always sweating, trying to, you know, get the toxins out. And just the sauna's great. Great way to, you know, get moving. So Phillip's getting in there. He's doing the sauna with us and just me, him, and LT. He's one morning. He's a rookie. So it's just me, him, and LT in there. Me and LT's talking. He's like, hey, guys, can I join you? We're like, of course. And we're just talking to him. Like, Philip, man, you're, you're doing good. And he's like, what you think, guys? I'm like, man, you're doing good. We're just baiting him. And we said, Philip. And we, he's like, yeah. I said, you could be the best quarterback that ever played the game. He said, if you just did your abs. He's in there starting to do crunches. <laughs> he's testing <laughs> Man, money. This true story. You gotta see Phil. You gotta next time you talk to him, say, "I'm not low on LT." You've been doing them abs. That's corner. How's them abs? He's going like, ah, right. oh, yeah. They got. He was in there start. We looked into the window, and then we get out. We peep in there. He's in there doing crunches. <laughs> <laughs> a little soft in the middle there, Phil. Yeah, exactly. A the exactly. A little soft in the middle, always. <laughs> he was great. I used to love chatting with philip man he was he was a lot of fun and oh was, no he's a ride especially on the flights home man he'd just start oh. walking around looking for someone to talk to like, like money which gosh darn it like, gosh darn it man. you know you know you, good. Yeah. you good yeah i'm good i'm good all right. All right. have fun out there today did i had some fun out there today <laughs> what was calling the fourth down play oh, the one where you got the first down it's like yeah, yeah we were pretty geeked we were pretty geeked phil yeah, that's good, right? That's good. <laughs> that's real good. He was great. That's I it. Love Bill. That's it. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Uh, Lo, have you ever wrestled? Have you ever wrestled Stephen Neal? Is Steve it true that you guys are actually brothers? Could could it be possible that in Fresno that Fresno is basically Northern Bakersfield in your last name? <laughs> last names are kind of similar. Is it Stephen or Stephen? It's it's Stephen. Stephen or Stephen? Stephen, you know, freaking, he's from down south, but he went to Bakersfield College. Stephen Neal's great dude. Uh, he's just man. We and him we were together for the state tournament that was in Bakersfield several months ago, and we're sitting by each other talking about reminiscing and telling me how you know one his agent, how he got into football. He he never even played. And he's thinking about, hey, I'm going to play. He gets an agent. They bring him in. Bel- you know, bring him in. Belichick brings him in yeah. and says, okay, you got some work to do. Bring him on the practice squad. And he just starts to grow and starts to, you know, do those things and learn. And it's like, this guy goes on to be an all pro. But, yeah, Stephen Neal, phenomenal guy, great person. 
his dad was dealing with uh, with cancer so thoughts and prayers with that but uh yeah. just a great man great person but no we never rolled around i'm a little i'm his i'm his elder so Stephen knows <laughs> better I, I told him i cut him don't touch me don't touch me steve uh let's see from felipe trade targets potential camp cuts camp cuts from other teams that the chargers would be interested in i would say defensive backs and defensive linemen interior defensive linemen would be my guess that that you're keeping an eye on there felipe but you never know there there could be someone that this coaching staff has worked with at a previous stop that they feel like never quite got an opportunity and want to want to work with them again so that's that's something, but that would be, to me, that's still sort of the two positions that I've got circled as quite, you know, depending on what Tony Jefferson has to offer at that safety spot, that's one that feel like you still want to see JT Woods raise his hand or Tony Jefferson, after being out of football all of last year, still have something left to, to give the Chargers, but that, and, and also I think defensive backs, the, the, the corner position, it's not just safeties, but you can never have too many corners. And and defensive line with Puna and with Morgan Fox and with Tito and Morgan and um, Scott Matlock, I, I feel like that's a position group that that you would keep an eye on. Sure, that and, and my, also, I guess. Yeah, and also it, it's, it depends on the player. If it's a big time receiver, you know, a veteran type of guy, a guy that they think can help. Of course, you can never have enough linebackers, great linebackers, a, 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 a plugger, a guy that you know can fly around and just wreck, make habit. So you always are looking and running back. So I think that I think it depends on who it is uh, that would make the Chargers jump. Yeah. All right. One more. Uh, da, 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 da. This one's good. Uh, let's do the. All right. Here we go. Let's go with. Um, after some time has gone by, dust is settled. This is from Accomplished Year, forty-eight ninety-nine. Which short contract player that we picked up this season is most likely to have a comeback and surprise everyone on the other end? If you had to choose a free agent we sign that will likely not pan out, we won't do that. We don't want to. We don't want to <laughs> put a pox on anybody. Uh, so, one year, one year player that you want to start. You want me to start low? What do you got? I'd go running back. You yeah. have two of those guys. You're probably going to go the same way, right? I think, I think it's JK just because we've seen yeah. it, you know, we, we've, and it's just a health thing. So you're just crossing your fingers that, that JK's Achilles is fully healthy and that he's still young enough and me medical technology is advanced enough that those injuries aren't what they used to be. And that he goes back to being what we think he could be. That's that to me is the one, the other one I think that's worth, looking at is is dj shark dj you know dj shark is a legit four three guy now he's also had some injuries and you wonder how much speed that sapped but like i said i went back and watched every single one of his routes that he ran in carolina and dude's got juice he's got separation he's good in 50 50 contested catches mike williams style we know how good Her herbert is at placing the ball in those situations and he's a burner. Like he still looked like he had, you know, not Olympic level, but certainly top tier NFL level speed. So those, those would probably be the two that I'd that I'd keep an eye on. Yeah, I, I'm with you. But I, I, when you're talking about that running back, when you saw the way he played for Baltimore, yeah. when that Achilles, I mean, that game he was on fire. I on mean, fire. runs hard, can make people miss, runs with vision, quick. I, this guy, like you said, it, it can be very special. So I'm pulling for him because this is a back that I can think that if he play, if he shows him that he could play at that same type of level, he's a five to ten million dollar back. That's yeah, the kind of that's, that's the kind of potential he shows. And he's he's on a prove it deal. He's on a he's on a veteran minimum prove it deal. Came to this situation because he believed he was healthy. And he's going to put up those numbers and he's going to cash in at the end of the year. That's why he signed it. It's why he came here. He had other offers and that's, and again, it's, yeah, we're, we're, we're projecting, we're manifesting, we're hoping, but we know it's in there because we've seen it. So, all right. So that's going to do it for us. Another just goes by like that. Yeah. Low. Yeah. And next week we'll be talking about full on training camp. I mean, we will be, we'll have had, I'll, I'll be out there on the 23rd. For the first day, we'll have seen it, see what it looks like, see how different, see if, see if Coach Harbaugh is still bouncing around and laughing and having a good old time or first day of training camp. Maybe it, 
You could and, turn it up. They're going to well, turn it up. Uh, things might change a little bit uh, <laughs> as we get into the first day of actual training camp. So uh, good to see you again, love. After, you too, uh, buddy. After last week, we'll be back again next week. Big thank you to Lindsay and a big thank you to all of you for leaving your comments and your ratings and your reviews. It, it helps us a lot, and it's an exciting season. We're excited about what's to come, and, and football's back. You know, we're going to be talking about actual training camp practices this time next week. So thanks, everybody, for checking us out. No worries. Cheers.